So thank you for everyone for coming today. Uh, my name is Dr. John Ginhart. I'm a chiropractor here at the Wild Life Center. And so today we're going to be talking about sitting, sleeping, and standing and how important that is, uh, especially for those of you that are already under chiropractic care here. Um, really, really important uh, because things you do outside the office impact what we're able to do inside the office and how well you feel. And so um, and my experience has been with a lot of clients that when they finally start implementing some of these things that we talk about, they just feel tremendously better. And so it's really, really important. And so what we're going to do first is I'm going to be talking about um, just the mechanics of the spine, how the spine functions, and then we'll be talking about how to stand properly, how to sit properly, and how to sleep properly. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and just get started. Okay, so Dr. Jetkowitz, um, he is the developer of the ABC Advanced Biostructural Correction Technique that we use here at the Wall of Life. And one key observation he made about the spine is that bones can and do go out of place in directions the body cannot self-correct because it has no muscle or a combination of muscles pulling in the direction needed. So basically what that means is that if a bone goes into a forward position, there's not enough muscles in the back to pull it back to where it should be. Okay, so if, if you're hit from behind, um, if you have uh, an accident, a car accident, or even just sitting at a desk for a long time, something like that, if a bone goes forward, your rest of the body is going to collapse because it's losing leverage, okay? And there's not enough muscles to pull that bone back into place. So what will happen is if your body goes like this, it's going to compensate and twist and turn to try and bring you to an upright position, okay? And so that can cause a lot of problems. But that's the key thing that you need to understand about the body is that bones can do go out of place. And so then they need to be adjusted to restore that leverage. Okay, so let's talk about mechanics of the human spine, how the spine functions. So for this, we'll, I'll use this model too, okay? So here is um, the spine and the nerves, okay, and the discs. And so the vertebra of the spine, okay, which are these, all these bones here, work together as a leverage system to lever the body into an upright position. So what that means is that all these bones interlock, okay, and they create a, a whole system when together that keeps your body upright, okay? So a lot of people think that um, posture is a function of just muscle control, of good manners, of trying hard, all these different things, but it's not. It's a function of leverage. And so when your body is not leveraged properly, it's going to collapse forward, and that's what causes a forward posture like this. When the bones are in the proper position, then your body will pop up on its own because that leverage system is now working. Okay? Um, so what's called a primary biomechanical pathology, or PBP, is a structure that normally acts to lever the body into a normal upright position, okay, such as a vertebra, but is out of optimal mechanical position and no longer supports the body via that leverage effect, and that the body cannot retrieve or fully reposition on its own. So again, when you have one of these, a PBP, it's one of these bones moves forward out of position, the body can't self-correct it, so everything just starts to break down, and that causes pain, breathing issues, some things I'll talk about. Um, and so the only way to get that corrected is to bring that bone back into position and the body will automatically leverage itself back to where it should be. So a lot of things I'll be talking about today in sitting, sleeping, and standing are things that if not done properly can either create some of those PBPs or make them worse and just make your body just what we call go forward, just fall forward, okay, which is something you don't want to happen. So when one of these things occurs, when one of these bones goes forward, you create what's called a compensation pattern, okay, or it's a twisting of the spine. Um, so as a result, um, the body will intentionally misalign other structures and directions it can self-correct. So these other structures can be other bones, it can be muscles, ligaments, tendons. So this is done to remove the stress and pressure from that area of subluxation or, or PBP, thereby reducing the chance of injury at those locations. So if this bone moves forward, Okay, now this, this area of the spine is more susceptible to injury. Okay, it's less stable. So in order to protect itself, the body will twist and turn, try and take pressure off that area and kind of spread out the mechanical stress over other areas of this body. And that's um, the reason why some people get achy and sore and, and the pain keeps shifting around and moving because the body is doing its best to try and, and protect that one area. Um, and these compensation patterns will remain in place as long as that primary misalignment is in place. So until that's corrected, those compensation patterns will continue to exist. Um, and so at these compensation locations, that pain and discomfort are usually felt. So what's interesting is that 
the area where the bone is actually misaligned is usually not where it's painful. It's usually where the body is compensating, where those twists and turns are occurring because it's really tight because the body is trying to pull it back into a certain position. Um, so it's important to understand that where you hurt is not necessarily where the problem is. It could be somewhere else that is not painful at all. But once these areas are corrected, the body will restore the compensations to their normal position, if it can. So what that means is that, so say one of the bones in the bottom here is misaligned forward and the body twists and turns to compensate for it. Once you correct this, the body should untwist back to a normal position. However, what happens sometimes is that that compensation pattern can actually become a subluxation on its own. And then you create another compensation to deal with that compensation pattern, right? So you can have layers of compensation patterns. Um, and so sometimes it it's, feels like it's going back and forth when we're correcting the area and stabilizing the spine because we're kind of um, having this big ball of twisted yarn we're trying to undo with all these compensation patterns, okay? But the body will do it. So, what happens when this occurs? So as the spine breaks down and loses leverage, there are certain postural deviations that will become evident. Okay, and these are a lot of things that you'll see, uh, especially you know, out in public, at the supermarket, at the mall, wherever, even around the kitchen table maybe, right, with your family members, you'll see this. So one of the uh, things that happens is the head goes forward like this. Okay, you'll see people with their head just forward. Okay, you'll see the shoulders rotated forward like that. They can have um, accentuated or absent spinal curves, right? So they might have a big curve like this. They might be rigid and straight. They might have what's called a sway back, or they might be straight there. Um, could be a combination of those. Um, they can have rotation of the spine, rib cage, and pelvis. So these are the people that are walking around like this, right? Or their clothes don't quite fit right. Their pants are always twisted off to the side, one way or the other. Or one pant leg is always shorter than the other one. Okay, it's not because the, the pants are broken. Right? It's because they're twisted, and that's pulling one of the pant legs up. So if you see someone walking around with all these different positions, these are all compensations occurring. Okay, and that's actually the most stable position that the body can be in at that point, although it's not very stable at all. Um, and that's when, um, when you have something where someone says, well, I just reached down to pick up a piece of paper, and my back went out. Right? Obviously, it wasn't the weight of the paper that threw their back out. It was all these compensations that were in place, making the body less stable, and it was just that wrong twisting motion at the wrong time that kind of knocked down the blocks and everything came tumbling down. Um, so the inability to maintain upright posture, um, uh, upright posture upon exhalation in the presence of folds in the chest and abdomen is also an indication. So what this means is if someone takes a deep breath and just totally breathes out and lets their body relax and if they slump like that, you can see where there's you know, a fold here, here, the body just kind of falls forward like this, that's also an indication that there's problems. So when the body is corrected and functioning properly and in the right or mechanical state, when you exhale, it shouldn't be any of those, those folds. You should be just nice and stable. But these are the people that sigh and, oh, right, like the weight of the world is on their shoulders. All right, that's because everything is falling forward and that's gonna cause a lot of pain. Breathing. So because of the rotation and collapse of the rib cage, the ribs cannot fully expand or contract. So what happens is if your ribs, okay, which are here on the sides, right, the ribs are connected to your sternum and then your thoracic or your mid, your mid back, okay, if these areas are not working properly, the ribs can't expand. And if the ribs can't expand, your lungs can't expand, you can't take a deep breath. So that's what happens to a lot of people on a daily basis when they're walking around like this, they're not breathing. They're just doing these shallow breaths. Um, and if you can't get a lot of oxygen in, that's bad news, right? That's bad for your brain, that's bad for your pH level, that's bad for your entire body. We need oxygen, right? Very important. Um, so if you're not getting that in, that can cause all kinds of problems. Um, this decreased oxygenation of the tissues um, can have, have far-reaching negative effects on body health. So a lot of times, just getting someone upright and breathing properly can do wonders for them. And they feel it too. They're like, Wow, you can actually see the, the blood come back into their face. Their face changes colors again. Um, they have their eyes pop open wide because they're actually breathing for the first time in a long time. Okay, and that's extremely important. Okay, pain and abnormal movement. Um, so this can happen also. So a spine that is locked into a forward and rotated position will affect every joint in the body. All right, so if you're walking around nice and upright, everything should be working properly, moving as it should in, in gravity. But if you're forward, if you're twisted, 
Now, every motion that you make is going to be causing pain and strain on the joints. Okay, the joints are going to be slightly out of place, so you're going to be grinding those joints, causing inflammation, causing pain. The muscles are going to be tight. So you're going to be achy all over the place all the time because you're just in this locked position. Um, over time, this chronic pain will develop in these areas and these joints will lose their ability to move. So this is someone who, over time, because they're in this position, they start losing, say, shoulder range of motion. Okay, it just gets less and less and less because it's getting more painful. And before they know it, they, they don't have much motion. Okay, or their neck is a big one. Um, if you see someone, you know, if they're in their car and they're looking, trying to look the other way for traffic and their whole body turns, okay, that's an indication, right? If they're talking to you and they have to turn their whole body, right, they just can't turn their neck, everything is just locking up and not moving anymore. And the more that's like that, the more adhesions will form in the joints, um, the less the joint will move. So over time, you're going to get less and less movement and it'll be more and more painful. Neurologic effects. So Dr. Alf Brigg, he was a neurosurgeon, he demonstrated that brain stem tension resulting from a flexed and forward spine can cause significant symptoms, including symptoms of multiple sclerosis. So what this means is that when the spine is, is twisted, it's locked forward, that's actually stretching the spinal cord and stretching the brain stem, which leads right into the brain. And so when those nerve tissues are stretched, they lose their ability to function properly. So they can't transmit signals back and forth between the body and the brain. So it's, it's kind of like having a bad cell phone connection, right? It keeps breaking up. You can't quite hear what the other person is saying. Well, that's the same thing that happens in your body. If your brain can't quite understand what your body is saying and vice versa. Then you're going to have a breakdown in that communication and a breakdown in that control of the brain. Uh, and this can cause far-reaching effects, even multiple sclerosis. Um, what Dr. Brig did was actually he did surgeries where he would um, basically fix someone's head in what's called extension. So if, if someone were like this, he would actually me mechanically, through surgery, reposition their head and lock it in this position, and almost all of their multiple sclerosis symptoms would go away. Um, and when they released that band and they went back into this forward position, all their symptoms would come back. So it can be very traumatic. Um, some common neurologic effects that are seen with this flex position are brain fog. And that's what people explain to me is just you can't quite think straight. You're not you're quite with it or quick. You're kind of in a daze. Uh, um, poor balance, right? You're falling all over the place. Insomnia. Poor regulation of autonomic functions. This is um, your sympathetic and your parasympathetic system. So this is someone who uh, will be locked into a sympathetic fight or flight. So they're always on edge. Um, their heart's racing. They're just wide awake. They can't relax. Um, or the opposite, they're locked into a parasympathetic where they just can't get going. They're just like fatigued and tired. Um, abnormal pain syndromes. These are pain syndromes that, you know, quote unquote, don't make sense. Um, so this is a person who has a chronic pain issue, goes to a medical doctor, gets x-rays, MRIs, and they're like, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. We can't find anything wrong, right? Um, because that joint itself might not be diseased or have a problem. But it's, of the, it's part of a larger issue of the spine being twisted and tight and the nerves not functioning properly. So you can have these really weird pain things that happen, move around the body, don't make sense. Um, headaches, a big one. Uh, because what happens is the body starts to fall forward like this, the muscles in the neck are going to pull back to try and pull the head back to try and pull the body back. So you get all this tension up here. So you get all these like suboccipital headaches that radiate up around here or neck tension headaches. Uh, lack of mental clarity, again, some of that brain fog. So all this can occur when your spine's not working properly. Um, so your responsibility, the importance of proper sitting, standing, and sleeping. Again, extremely important what people do outside the office and how they treat their spines um, and the rest of their body uh, of how well they're going to heal, how well they're going to feel, um, how, how often they have to see me. Right? Um, if someone's not taking care of their body and not doing anything that I'm asking them to do, they're probably going to have to see me a lot more frequently. Okay? And their, their care plan is going to take a lot longer because they're constantly beating up their body. So assuming improper body positions can worsen body mechanics by forcing bones out of place in directions the body cannot self-correct. Right? So you can actually create more of those PVPs, those subluxations that go forward just by poor body positioning. Since most people are stuck in a forward curve, um, designers have shaped furniture, beds, shoes, car seats,
to accommodate these poor postures, making existing PBBs worse and creating new ones. Okay, so most of the people that design furniture have bad backs, right? And so they create furniture that feels good to them. And furniture that feels good to them is not proper furniture. And that's why most um, car seats you sit in, um, they force your head forward, right? And they kind of smush you like this. They kind of fold you in half. Um, a lot of chairs are the same way. Um, sofas, the big sofas that are, you know, big overstuffed. You sit in, you kind of just melt into the sofa, right? They're bad for you too. Um, but if you already have back pain, if you already have problems, they might actually feel good because it's helping your body compensate in a way. I mean, it's, it's allowing your body to twist and turn and do all the contortions it needs to. But you find when, once your body is corrected, sitting in those types of seats is very uncomfortable because you can't breathe. You feel like, you're, oh, I'm going forward. You begin to see how bad they are for you. So it's important to understand that and to pick the proper pieces of furniture to sit in. Even if you're out somewhere at someone's house uh, or vacationing, you'll be able to see like, well, no, I'm not going to sit in that. No, I'm not going to sit in that. Well, okay, I can sit in that. That'll be okay. Um, or the bed, you can do some things to the bed or the pillows. Um, so it'll help keep you feeling much more comfortable and not worsen or create new problems. So these are things that you can do, um, test to check yourself basically to see um, if what you're doing is helping your body or hurting your body um, and using indicators. Um, so you can use it to determine if things you are doing are making it better or worse. These indicators or things you notice about your body are basically the same whether you are sit standing, sitting, or laying down. How upright you feel, how stable you are, how deeply and easily you can breathe, and muscle tension. Okay, so for example, um, and we'll go over this, but if you're standing in a pair of shoes and you just feel like you're going forward, okay, that's not good. If you take a breath and you just fold like this, that's not good. Um, if you sit in a chair and you just all of a sudden you can't breathe, Okay, or you lay in a bed and you're like, oh, this is horrible. Those are all indications. So I'm going to go over some specific ones. So positive indicators. Um, occur something you do changes your body mechanics for the better. Okay? So you would feel taller and very at ease. So for example, with the shoes, if you're in a, a pair of shoes that are proper for you, you'll feel like you're just standing up nice and tall. You'll breathe easily. Won't be a problem. When you sit in a chair, you'll, you can just pop right up in the chair. You can breathe well, you can get up out of the chair very easily. You don't have to like ugh, get yourself trying to, you know, unstick yourself in the chair. You can just sit right up without a problem. Um, there's less compression on your rib cage. So again, if you're being folded forward, you're going to feel that in the ribs. You're going to feel that pressure here in the middle of the chest. You'll be able to breathe easily and fully. You'll be more stable even with someone pushing on you. So um, those of you under care um, are familiar with this, that a lot of times I'm pushing on your back, especially when you're your first visit. And when I first pushed on your back, you know, you could feel yourself just doing one of these because you weren't stable at all. And as you get more stable, when I push on your back, now you shouldn't be able to really move much. So if you're wearing a pair of shoes that are not good for you, and I push on your back, you'll just fall forward. Okay, so you can even have someone do that. If you go out shoe shopping, put the shoes on, just stand there and have them just kind of tap you on the back. And if you just start going like this, you know they're not good. Um, your eyes will be open and you'll feel more alert. So when you're in the proper position, sitting, sleeping, um, well sleeping you should sleep actually deeper, but sitting and standing, you'll be more alert. You'll be awake, your eyes won't be like closing. Um, so you're, if you're in a proper or a poor um, chair or a pair of shoes, you'll just feel sleepy, you'll feel kind of funky is the word I'll use. So, the, so that's the negative indicators occur when you do something to make your body mechanics worse body becomes less stable. Okay, again, you just, your body is just kind of shifting all over the place. You can't really stand at one place without fidgeting or sit without fidgeting. Um, you lean forward and the shoulders hunch over, especially after exhaling. So again, if you're in a chair and you take a breath and you let it out and you just <laughs> like that, okay, not good. Your rib cage is more compressed, so your, your breathing is immediately shallower and takes more effort. So if you feel like you constantly have to take a Take a deep breath, you're not getting enough oxygen in. And you may experience brain fog or feel drowsy. You might get that funky feeling, like I just don't feel right. I just feel kind of off. So these are indicators that you can use to test yourself when evaluating shoes, chairs, beds, car seats, all these different things. And the key is just to be aware of them. Most people aren't even aware of them, that they happen. 
But the more you become aware, the more of an expert you'll be and the easier you can pick out the proper things that are going to help your body. Now we're going to go through um, each thing. We're going to go through sitting uh, and sleeping and standing. And so I'm going to be more specific about this okay, and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So the correct sitting position is one that does not allow your body to slump. Okay? To do this, you need to have your hips slightly above your knees. This will tilt your pelvis forward, your shoulders back, and your head upright. So for example, I'm going to grab this stool over here. Okay, so we have just a basic stool here, right? So if I sit on the stool, okay, and if my knees are higher, if my knees are higher than my hips like this, you can see as soon as I do that, my body just wants to fold forward like this. Okay, because it changes the position of the pelvis, and immediately my body just wants to come forward. So if you're in those chairs, like a big office chair, where you just kind of sink into the chair, or you're watching TV in a big couch, okay, and you can and you can just feel yourself doing this, right? Do you think I can breathe okay like this? No, right? Shoulders are forward, heads forward. So you want to be in a position where the pelvis, and you can see as soon as I bring the the knees down and the pelvis forward, it's just it's pushing my body up like this. So to accentuate that a little bit, I'm going to show you what's called a wedge. Okay, we have these. Um, and so what this wedge does, you can see where it starts here, okay, and then it eventually increases up to a larger size. So this will angle your pelvis above your knees. All right, so if you put it on a seat like that and sit down, and now that's a completely different experience than just being on the flat surface because now my hips are definitely above my knees. So it's angling my pelvis this way, which is bringing my shoulders and my head back. Okay? Um, so if this is done correctly, you should be able to sit without pain okay, and get out of the chair easily. So again, if you're in a chair okay, and you sit down and then getting out is like, oh boy, Ugh, you have to try and launch yourself out of the chair, okay, that's not good. You should be able to just, just pop up right out of the chair without a problem. So this would be a good chair for sitting, okay? Because it's nice and firm, okay? And it's putting the person at a 90 degree angle, okay? And you can adjust it. Um, but when I sit here, what I want is to be nice and upright like this. And I want my, again, my um, hips to be slightly higher than the knees, okay? So you can adjust this chair to do that. Let's see if it's if it adjusts anymore. Might, might not adjust, that might be it. So then I, I would need maybe something like this to sit on, just to assist me a little bit. And that way, when I'm at my desk doing my work, I'm in a much better position. Um, so um, we actually sell these, and a number of people bought them that work in an office environment, um, accountants and so forth, that are in their chairs for a long time. And these help them tremendously, because if you're in a chair that's folding you in half all day, and you're on the computer like this, right? that's going to cause problems. So what you want is a chair that's going to be nice and firm, keeping you in this nice 90 degree angle between here, 90 degree angle here, both feet on the floor, um, and so you're nice and stable. And as an aside for a workstation, you want your computer monitor to be right in front. You want the keyboard to be where your arms are relaxed, so you're not extending out to work on the keyboard. Your shoulders aren't up to work on the keyboard. Shoulders should be nice and relaxed. Again, think 90 degree angles and relax. And even with the mouse, because I see a lot of people that use a mouse all the time and that hand with the mouse is extended. So they're always out like this or their the shoulder is raised up, okay? Or they're trying to be really efficient and they have their hand on the mouse, the phone, like this, right? And they're typing, <laughs> right? So that's not good because look what that's doing to your spine, right? Um, so you want to have everything where you're nice and relaxed. Um, and also to take frequent breaks where you're not in that chair for hours at a time. That's important. So standing, okay, this is a big one, because who wears shoes? Right? Everyone here wears shoes, right? So there's a false idea that the feet should be supported in shoe, well in shoes with arch supports. Okay? Not true. Arch supports will actually make your back worse. They might make your feet feel better, but they're going to make your back worse. Okay, the reason why people need arch supports is because the feet are collapsing, 
because they're compensating for the spine and the pelvis. And that's painful. So when you put arch supports in, it actually makes the feet feel better, but the rest of your spine now has to compensate for that. So what my experience has been with clients is that they have these um, arch supports or orthotics things made, their feet stop hurting, they feel great, but then a few months down the road, a year down the road, they start having chronic hip pain they never had before, or shoulder pain, or all these things start to hurt, they just can't get to go away. And it's because their body is now compensating for the orthotics. So they get the orthotics out of their shoes, correct their spine, now they can stand without pain anywhere in their body, and they're more stable. So let me show you some of the orthotics that we collect. So here's a whole box full. You can get a picture of that, right? So all kinds. Um, so you can see here, right, this is even from a Merrill shoe. Um, there's that arch support there. Okay, there's also what's called a cup, okay, so the, where the heel goes back. So on all these things are not good for the feet. Um, there's ones that are, you know, a little more accentuated from like running shoes. Um, another one, they come in all shapes and sizes. So when people come in, they see all these and they think I sell them. I said, no, I take them. I take them from people. Um, even thin ones like this, you think aren't going to cause a problem, actually cause a problem. So you might ask, well, then what do you use, right? Um, so what you use is something more like this, okay? It's totally flat, right? There's no support, there's no cup, nothing like that. It's very flat, okay? And this will help your foot, support your foot without contorting it into a different position, okay? So that's one part. Um, Wearing shoes that, uh, that support these compensations may make you feel better, but, um, but they're not going to help you. Okay, so, so this is one part of it, the arch support. That's a huge thing because most people, when I tell them they need to take their arch supports out, they think, what? Uh, that's just totally countercultural. You're a radical. And I said, I know, but still take them out. And then I keep them and I'll, and I'll give them back to them um, because it actually makes them a lot worse. So other things that uh, affect your shoes, um, we talked about arch supports. Now, something else you need to be aware of is that sometimes shoes will have external arch supports, okay, which you can't fix and can also throw the person off. Um, toe box size, okay, that's the front part of the shoe where the toes are, must be large enough not to squeeze the foot from the sides. So if the shoe is too narrow, okay, so if you look at this as the bottom of the shoe and here's the foot, if the shoe is too narrow and squeezing, you're creating another what? Arch. You're creating another arch support basically by squeezing the foot. So in shoes that are too skinny, you're going to be squeezing the foot causing a problem. Also, the way the foot's designed is when it impacts, the toes should be able to spread out, dissipate the force before coming back together to push off again. So if your toes are locked into a toe box and they can't move, they can't dissipate those forces, so those forces go up your leg into your knee and your back and your hip instead of out on the ground, okay, which also causes a problem. So you want to have a nice wide toe box where your toes can move around. The instep, no mold, molded or plastic exterior instep, and that's the external part of the shoe. And then heel height, um, this is when I get um, quite a lot of racket from the ladies, but um, ranges from no heel to about two inches. Okay, so shoes that have a very high heel are going to throw the body forward. Okay, so imagine if I'm standing here without any heel, and I'll show you my shoes in a second. Okay, I'm nice and neutral. If I put a heel on there, if I, and if I don't compensate, right, it's just going to throw me what? Forward. forward, right? So then what happens? So, so if I'm being thrown forward like this, I actually obviously have to compensate so I don't fall on my face. Right, so what happens is I rotate the pelvis, okay, to try and counter the high heel, okay, and then I'm going back like this, so then I have to counter rotate here, okay, and then the head gets involved, and so you can see this is how people are walking around in high heels, okay, um, and that's why there's been studies showing that women that wear high heels consistently have a much higher incidence of osteoarthritis in their knees and their hips, 
um, because it's putting a lot of extra strain on those joints. Um, so it's important not to have really high heels. Two inches um, is about the maximum that you can have without causing a lot of disruption. Um, now sometimes having a little bit of heel is actually a good thing because it helps to pop you up a little bit, but too much it's going to throw you forward. But the important thing is to look at all these factors together. Okay, so a shoe uh, might be nice and flat, but if it's squeezing your foot, it's not going to work. Okay, it might have a high heel, um, but if it's got um, an arch, you can't use that. It might have a low heel, but if it has an arch, you can't use that. Um, it might uh, have a, a toe box that's too small and squeezing your toes, but it might be nice and flat. You can't use that. So it's got to fit all these criteria. So the best way to figure it out is to, what do you think? Test it, right? So you put the shoe on and see, do you fall forward? Okay, so people bring their shoes in to me all the time and say, hey, can you I just got this pair of shoes, let's test them. So I'll have them stand in their shoes and I'll push them and see, are they going forward? Can they breathe okay? Do, are they causing folds? You know, all these different things. Um, and sometimes I'll need to modify the shoe a little bit. So I have some um, inserts and uh, what we call heel chips and different things that can modify the shoes to make them work properly. And sometimes all it takes is what we call a dot, okay? <laughs> so this dot is about um, 1 32nd of an inch high and that takes the place of an arch support, okay? And put in the shoe properly, that can mean the dif difference between a pair of shoes that is nice and stable and one that makes you unstable. Okay, that's how particular your body is. So when you have these huge arch supports, right? You have something like this compared to that. Big difference, right? Okay, so if I'm, uh, if I'm shoe so shopping at a store, I'll take a look, at, can I, I'll look on the outside. And so here, okay, it's not too bad. It's continuous around here. And then this side, there's a little bit of an, of an external arch. Can you see that where right. it curls up a little bit there? Okay, and then I'll look inside. Okay, and I'll see, is there an internal arch in there? Um, I'll take out the um, insert. This one's glued in a little bit. I'm going to take it out. I guess I didn't even know that was in there. Yep. So I'll take out the insert and see. So this has got some different stuff going on. You can see. It's got a little bit of a heel cup there. Okay, so then I'll put that to the side, and I'll look in the shoe itself and see if there's any kind of arch going on in here after you take the insert out. So that wasn't originally in there, that's extra? Well, that was part of the shoe, but there's, you can take them out. Okay. Yep. So looking in here, um, it's not too bad as far as being flat. Okay, so that's good. Um, and the toe box and whether how um, skinny the shoe is, uh, we'll just have to see when you put it on his foot. Uh, for some people, this would be fine. Others, it's not going to work. Okay. So first what we'll do is we'll put this back in. Okay, and so I'm going to have you, um, let's check this one. Yeah. All right, so put your shoes back on for me. Yeah, you don't have to tie them. You can just slip them on. Sit, you I can sit, sit down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll just stand here and, and face that way. Okay, so what we're going to do next, okay, I'm just going to do a little test here. So you can see different areas of the spine. When I push on you, you start to rock forward. Yeah. All right. Okay, more stable there. higher. So there's different areas. Yep, some are more stable, some are less stable. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and take your shoes off again. There. Okay, and turn and face that way. Okay, so we're just going to test again. Not as much lean forward. Right? Yep, not as much, right? Right. Still a little bit now. Um, I've never adjusted this person, <laughs> so I have no idea what their spine's like. So, um, but you can see even for someone that's not been adjusted, it's going to affect how they stand, right? Now, does age make a difference or not? Nope. So what we're going to do next is we're going to modify these a little bit and see if we can fix them for you. So you can put that one back on there. You can, yep, go over there and turn and face that way again. Same spot. Yep. Okay. See the difference? No movement at all, right? So, yeah, so now you're, so without these in here, so you're more, you're more stable. Good then. Right. 
So, um, so you can see, even with someone who's not had their spine adjusted or corrected, the effect it has. So most people are walking around with you know, their bodies compensating, trying not to fall forward with just the shoes they're wearing. Um, and I've seen even more profound changes in especially like running shoes or shoes that have a high arch support, where I'll be adjust them and they'll be solid as a rock when I'm pushing on their back, put the shoes on and they almost fly forward. Okay? So it can be a really profound effect. So it's something you definitely want to take a look at, all of your shoes. Okay? Um, and if you're under care, you can bring them in, have them checked out so I can see whether they're working for you or not. Again, some shoes you might pick up and they might look perfect. You put them on your feet, they don't work for you. Um, other shoes, you might pick them up like, I don't think these are going to work. You put them on and they work. Okay, so, oh, here's a picture of a woman's high heel shoe. Does that look comfortable? No. Now, that's a stiletto, right? So most women don't walk around all day wearing stilettos. Um, but you can see how that's contorting the foot and imagine what that's doing to the rest of the spine, right? And why those types of shoes cause problems. I want to show you some shoes that I have, okay, that work well. So, um, and on the sheet that I hand out will be all types of recommendations. Um, but these are Vans, okay. So, a uh, very basic shoe, okay, nice and flat all around. Okay, nice and flat on the inside. Okay, there's no arch support, nothing like that. So, I, I use these for work, okay. Um, and they're, you know, you can get them at Kohl's, so they're not super expensive. Lots of different styles too, if you're into stylish things, but I just like the black. Um, so those are work shoes. Another pair of work shoes I have are these, okay. Same thing, okay. They're pretty flat around there, okay. There's no heel, there's no inside arch. They're nice and wide, nice wide toe box. My feet are very comfortable in these. Um, Converse, Chuck Taylors. Right? These are a good casual shoe. Again, they're nice and flat. There's no external arch. There's no internal arch. Um, they're, you know, they're wide here. There's just not a lot to them. So really, a lot of times, the best shoe is the cheapest shoe you can find. There's not a lot to it. You don't want a shoe that's highly engineered and has all kinds of stabilizers and supports and all of this stuff. You really don't need that. Um, for um, sandals, um, these are called zero shoes. Okay, we sell these here. So um, a lot of sandals have arch supports. They have like heel cups and so forth. So this is just totally flat. Okay, there's, there's not a uh, cup. It's just uh, a part to help keep your heel in place. But it's just totally flat the whole way. Um, and these come in different colors, different sizes. You can get them sized to your foot. But these are a great summer sandal. These are better than flip-flops because with flip-flops, um, your toes are actually scrunching a little bit when you wear them to keep the flip-flop on your foot. So it keeps your foot locked up and tight. Okay, where you wear something like this where your foot is locked in, your foot can relax. And it's not locked, it's not tight. It's a much better shoe. Um, these are um, Vibram Five Fingers. Okay, um, so I use these for running. So again, uh, you know, there's really not much to the shoe. Okay, there's no stabilizers, there's no supports. Um, it's like being uh, barefoot. Okay, now these, um, word of caution, uh, take time to get your foot used to. Okay, it took me uh, about a year to transition from a regular running shoe to the five finger uh, because the muscles in your feet have to strengthen, the ligaments, the bones. Um, so you definitely do not want to just put these on and go do your normal run. That will cause problems. Um, but if you work into them, um, they're great. They're very comfortable. Um, I use them a lot. Um, and these, um, I just got these recently. These are boots. Okay, these are minimalist boots. Um, so most boots have a heel. Okay, most boots, they're narrow on the instep here. Um, so I love the guys that are construction workers or mechanics or what have you that need to wear a boot. And their boots were killing them. And they couldn't find one that was working. So I found this one. Um, and one of the guys that's using it now, he's a mechanic. He loves it. And so it's got a nice wide toe box here. It's totally flat, okay? There's no arch support. Um, they come in different um, styles. There is a black leather one also, probably a little bit more, you know, better for the winter, a darker brown one, but they're nice and lightweight. Okay, there's not a lot to them, so you're not clunking around these super heavy boots. 
Okay, and they're very supportive. Excellent, excellent. And these are on the sheet that I'll hand out too. So these are great also. So it just takes a little bit of research sometimes to find the right shoe. But those are all good ones. Um, there's also ones that I have on the sheet, uh, ones that you can trace your foot out and have made specifically. Um, so they run the gamut. Some of those are $150. You know, the Converse were 30 bucks. So it just depends you know, what, what you like, what you're going to use them for. Um, but they're out there. It just takes a little bit of um, investigation sometimes, trying shoes out, uh, and just being really conscientious of what you're putting on your feet. Talk about sleeping, and this is one uh, extremely important thing because, again, this is something that all of us do, hopefully. Uh, we spend a lot of hours sleeping, and the position that people sleep in can either really help them or really hurt them. Um, and so for a lot of clients that I've worked with, once we've gotten their sleeping position worked out properly, um, they've seen a tremendous difference in how they feel, how they wake up, how rested they are, um, just night and day. And so it comes down to two things, your bed and your pillow, right? Um, so as far as a bed, um, you should have a nice firm mattress, um, not a pillow top, okay? Because what happens with the pillow tops is that the pillow top material itself on top will get kind of crushed down and that will create some divots in the mattress. Um, and that will break down long before the rest of the mattress does, so you'll end up with a problem mattress with only a couple years use out of it. So you don't want a, a pillow top. Um, you want one preferably that's um, different layers of foam, okay, so it's nice and firm. And basically as firm as you can take it um, is the idea. So if, you, if you're on a bed where you just sink into the bed, that's not good because it's putting you, again, it's folding you either this way or if you're on your side, your hips are going to sink down. Okay, it's not going to support you in a nice neutral position. Um, some people have sleep number beds, you know, with the air, and you want to pump them up as much as you can, even close to 100. Nice and firm, okay, as firm as you can get it. And that's really important. Um, the other thing is the pillow, okay. A lot of people, I hear their um, pillow sagas, right, of all the different pillows they try, and they have all these pillows all over the place, and they have pillows in the closet and pillows under the bed, and because they can't find the right pillow. Um, and that's because all pillows are not made for each person, right? And the pillow you buy at the store is just one standard size, and once you, what you have is what you have. You can't, you can't fix that. Um, and the pillow height is extremely important, okay? Because if you're sleeping on your side, you want a pillow that's going to be positioning you in a way that's keeping your head in a, in a neutral position. But when you're on your back, you don't, you don't want a pillow that's so high that it's pushing you forward. So, for example, if I'm against this pole here, okay, you can see the distance between the pole and my head. Okay, it's a fair amount of distance. If I turn like this, now what's the distance? Right, much less. So you need a pillow that's going to accommodate, um, actually you need two different pillows really. One that's going to accommodate when you're on your side and one while you're on your back. So some people just make the decision, I'm just going to sleep on my back or I'm just going to sleep on my side and we, can, we create a pillow that's specific to their body type that keeps them in alignment. Okay, so these are the pillows that we sell here. So you can see it's all these different layers of foam of different sizes. Okay, and that's so we can customize it to each individual. And we'll build one here. Um, and what's really great about this is that typically there's going to be some leftover foam. So when you get home, um, you can either, you know, you can have another pillow um, or you can use it to customize your pillow even a little bit further because the density of the table here is obviously different than your bed, mm -hmm. right? So once you get home, you might need to, you know, add a little bit, take a little bit away. And you can do that with this pillow, whereas a standard pillow you buy in the store, you can't do that, right? So we're going to start with um, side sleeping first. So we're going to start with kind of the, what I call the setting, lowest setting. Okay, so just down here like this. So you're going to just lay on your side facing this way, please. Okay, so a couple things that we look at. One is, is overall comfort. Is that comfortable? A little higher would be better. Yeah. So take a deep breath for me. Okay. And let it out. Was that easy or difficult to take a breath? I think it was okay. Was it okay? All right. So we'll monitor that as we adjust the pillow height. And then the other thing to look at is, uh, you just relax for me. Yep, like you're going you're gonna to get asleep. So you can see how I can move the shoulder around here a lot. Okay. So you can see how our head's rocking back and forth, right? So it's not really stable, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add another layer, um, a thinner layer. So you can lift your head up for me. 
and actually a little bit more. You can just like, kind of sit up there so I can get this all the way underneath. Good. Okay, now. Okay, and take a deep breath again. Better. Easier to take a deep breath. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. so now we're going to just relax again. See how you're rocking less? Yeah. So now you can see how even though, you know, if I push, there's still some movement, but our body now is, using, is moving more of a unit, and it's not our head and our shoulders going in the opposite directions. Yeah. Okay, more stable. <coughs> okay, does that feel comfortable? Or could it be a little bit higher? A little higher. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go with our thinnest layer. Okay, so let me put this here. Okay, and go ahead. Okay, and take a nice deep breath. Much better. Better? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's relax. So, yep, so even more stable there. So if you close your eyes, do you think you could fall asleep? Oh, I could. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so we saw how it felt when it was too short. So I'm going to intentionally make it a little too high. So you can see. So if we look here, okay, you can just stay where you are. So you can see where the head is pretty much in line with the rest of the body. Okay? It will be up a little bit here, which is okay. But if you draw a line, it's in line with the rest of the body. So if we intentionally make it too high... Okay, go ahead and lay down. Okay. Yeah, I'm used to sleeping, actually. That's how you're used to sleeping? <laughs> With my head too high. Yeah. So take a deep breath. Okay, blow it out. Okay. So we're starting to get a little bit more motion back in because it's too high. Uh -huh. You see that? Mm -hmm. So in that one position where it was just right, it was easy breathing nice and stable, and if she closed her eyes, she could just go right to sleep. So what we're looking for, you can lift up your head again. Okay, go ahead. So that would be a good side pillow for Alicia. So everything is in a line. Her shoulders are pretty much over each other. Um, right, she's stable. She's not really moving anywhere. She can breathe easily. So she's set up for a good night's sleep, okay? Um, the knees are bent, and um, you can, to answer your question, Lenny, you can put a, a pillow or something between the knees, that's fine. Um, the most important part is up here. Okay, so, so this would be your side pillow. Okay, so now just turn over on your back, please. Okay, good. Too high. But now you can see that that's not working, right? Right. So see how the head is, yeah. is flexed forward like this? Okay, so take a deep breath. Okay, you can probably feel that in your neck a little bit, right? So since the windpipe is being closed down, it's hard to take a deep breath. Plus, if your head's like this, it's forcing you into flexion, pulling on the spinal cord, all bad stuff. So if we, you can lift up your head, okay? Does that and make you snore more? Yep. Okay. Yeah, because if you're, um, right, if, you're, if everything is closed off, that's going to be a problem. So how does that feel? That's nice, actually. Can I take a deep breath? Yeah, see, easier to take a deep breath? Yes. Much easier, right? Yeah, I feel relaxed. So, so she's going to take a nap here while we yeah, finish yeah. talking. Um, so, oh, go ahead. Nope. So, um, so you can see how the difference though, between this is the back position and then adding that is the side position. So you can see how having just one pillow doesn't work. Okay, so you need to either have two pillows, right? So what we could do is put a pillowcase on that. Um, and then build up, we have this extra foam, so we could just create another pillow, that's the height we made it, we need it, and have two separate pillows, one for the side sleeping, one for the back sleeping. Um, okay, great, so you can come on up. Now you say people choose which side they're going to sleep on, but I slept on a night, so how would you do that? Uh, well, you have to be aware. <laughs> okay. um, and basically, you know, have the two pillows right there and be able to switch them in and out. Okay and grab the one you want to use when you're on your side or you know, when you're on your back. Perhaps I'm switching because I'm not comfortable because I don't have the right pillow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so what, what I find is that once, once we get the pillow in the bed set up, then typically people will fall asleep either on their back or their side and just be out for the night. 
and they're not going to toss and turn much. They're not going to be looking for pillows because they're comfortable, and they're actually in a deeper sleep. Okay, so again, um, shoes. So wide toe box, no arch support, no heel cup. Okay, that's in the back. Um, basically, you're looking for a simple, flat, wide shoe without a lot of technology built into it. Okay, so some things to avoid at all costs, some shoes, Birkenstocks actually, um, because the way they start to mold to your feet, they create like a heel cup and, and you start to rock backwards. Um, MBT shoes, these are the shoes that have the curved heels. You were, they were out for a while. Um, or fit flops. Um, anything that claims to tone you as you walk, <laughs> right? Um, not good. Um, any shoe with the heel higher than um, two inches, okay? And any shoe that squeezes your toes or your, or your midfoot is not good. Um, shoes that are nearly perfect um, for dress, business casual. Um, Aurora Shoe Co. Uh, company. These are made to order. These are ones where we'd actually draw out, sketch out your foot, send that into the company, and they'll make a shoe based on your specific size. Um, there is a discount um, on those. Um, Vivo Barefoot, uh, another sh online company that makes a shoe that's very flat. Um, Ulukai, that's, these are the ones that I'm wearing. Ulukai, okay, very comfortable. Um, these actually you can get in Doylestown at a place called Lilies of the Field. Um, um, Vans, you can get them at Kohl's or anywhere else, right? Um, exercise, running, walking, casual. Um, Feel Max shoes, again, these are shoes that are very thin. Um, you can get them online. Um, same idea, there's really nothing to them. Um, Vibram Five Fingers I, I showed you. Um, Converse, okay, or Chuck Taylors, or anything of that nature. Sandals, Zero Shoes. Um, uh, and you can see us for the Zero Shoes. We'll, we have a size chart to help fit you because it's not a conventional shoe, shoe size. There's charts. Um, and then the boots, um, the, the ones that I demonstrated are called, um, they're Tactical Research Mini Mill. So tacticalgear.com is where you can find those boots. Um, but remember, no matter what you buy, you need to test them, right? So you need to put them on and see if you rock forward. The best thing to do is bring your shoes into me, okay? And we'll test them and see. We might need to modify them a little bit. Might need to put in a little heel chip or one of those dots I showed you. Some other things we can do to just kind of tweak them to make them just right. So even if they look perfect, bring them in and we'll check them. Um, chairs, okay, including car seats. Again, you want that 90 degree angle relationship. Now car seats, uh, one of the things that's really bad about those, a couple things. Uh, one is most car, sheets, sar, car seats are shaped like this. Okay, so you sit in them and they intentionally raise your knees above your heels and shove you forward. Um, and then the headrest is pushing you forward even more. All right, so um, when you drive around, look at the person in the car next to you, uh, which is what I always do, <laughs> and, and you'll see most people are, are all the way forward like this, and the headrest is pushing them forward. So what you want to do is you can um, get uh, one of the wedges that we sell. You can put that on the car seat, and that will help bring you up. You can even put like a towel on the car seat to kind of fill it in, because some of the car seats kind of go in like this and dip in, so you can fill that in so it's flatter. Um, you can get... Um, a pillow for the back, excuse me, for the back seat, so it helps push you up so you're not like this. And then take the headrest, you want to take that off, turn it around, and put it back in, so now the headrest isn't pushing you forward, it's now in a more of a neutral position. So you can help create uh, a car seat that's better for you. Because again, a lot of people say, I feel great, but the car's killing me. I get out of the car seat, and I'm like, oh, and it's because the seat is just folding them in half. So really, really, really want to look at that. Um, chairs, um, again these chairs here um, are available at the well, um, <clears throat> but again you want a chair that's flat, 90 degree angles, helps to have your hips above your knees, not pushing you forward, you can pop in and out of the chair easily, it's nice and firm, your feet are flat on the ground. And then beds and pillows, um, uh, as far as beds, ABC does sell a bed, okay, and I have uh, those sheets, so if you're interested in that, let me know next time you come in. I'll go over that with you. Uh, but they actually do sell a bed that they've approved, that they have um, overseen the construction of, that's very firm. They also have foam pads, um, which you can buy. And so this I recommended to some people that don't want a full bed, 
Um, this is for more of, the, more of the adventurous type, but um, you can get a six inch foam pad of high density foam and just put that on um, a flat board um, and use that as your bed. Um, and so you're not, you don't have a mattress, you don't have a box spring, you just have the foam. Um, and uh, some people that have used that have found that to be really, really comfortable. It's nice and firm. Um, there's some travel foam too that ABC sells, so you can take that you know, with you if you're traveling somewhere and you're in a bed, bed somewhere, okay, you can use that, even put it on the floor, sleep on the floor, which would be better than sleeping on some of the beds out there. And then the pillow, um, this is the ABC pillow that we demonstrated with. Um, other areas you can get beds and foam, um, habitatfurnishings.com, foamorder.com. These are some areas, some um, places that clients have gone to get some products. So you can look on there also. Um, but again, the key is to be nice and firm and keep your head in a nice neutral position. Um, so in summary, what you want when you sit, sleep, and stand is you want to be in a, the most effective position you can in relation to gravity. So when gravity is pulling down you, all, which it is all the time, you want to be that, you want that to have as little effect on you as possible, right? So if you're standing up nice and tall with good shoes, shoulders back, okay, then gravity is having less of an effect on you than if you're forward, okay? If you have a bowling ball and hold it here, it's a lot easier to hold a bowling ball here than if you hold it further out here because now gravity is having more of an effect and it's going to pull you forward, okay? Your head is like a bowling ball, your shoulders, so if you're out like this, your body has to work much harder than if you're back like this. Okay, same thing when you're sitting. If you're sitting in a nice, those 90 degree angles, okay, then gravity is having less of an effect than if you're hunched over and the gravity is pulling you forward. Um, and of course, when you're laying down, gravity is distributed across um, that whole position, okay, but if your head is like this, okay, if your pillow is too high, imagine walking around like this all day, okay, not comfortable, okay, or if the pillow is too low and your head's kinked this other way. Okay, imagine walking around like that all day. And that's not good either, right? So you want it to be nice and neutral. So it's not pulling on the cord. Okay, well, thank you all for coming out today and enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs> <laughs>